Hi YouTube, this is Joe Kelton with Kelton Cutlery. You can find us on the web, keltoncutlery.com. Today I'm going to do uh, a short review on a, uh, a new meat, meat grinder I picked up. Um, as most folks know, I um, um, do an awful lot of hunting and um, I probably butcher, I'd say probably 60 to 70 percent of the meat that, that uh, comes through the household. Recently, I moved my, my 90 year old grandmother in with me, um, and uh, her teeth aren't as in good a shape as the rest of ours. So, while I normally work everything up to kind of minimize burger, um, I'd much rather have steaks and roasts and um, uh, stew meat, you know, uh, stir fry, you know, that sort of stuff over just regular old burger. Um, we're going to start grinding more uh, just because ground meat is a little bit easier on the teeth. So, I normally use the um, the grinding attachment on my wife's uh, KitchenAid mixer and while that is a really good attachment and it's you know I've been using one now for oh probably five eight years something like that it works really good for small batches like five to ten pounds um, for grinding bigger batches you'll be there for a lot longer the machine gets hot it doesn't really have the the oiling or the the greasing capacity and the gears um, so it's not really ideal for, for grinding large amounts of meat. So I went and picked up a Cabela's Carnivore Meat Grinder. Now this thing is a beast. Um, I had an awful lot of Cabela's Club Bucks saved up, which is probably why I went ahead and went for this one. Um, because it is a, a very large purchase. Uh, I want to say between the grinder and an extra cool pack, um, plus shipping, um, it was going to run about 600 bucks or so. Now, granted, I got a free shipping sale and 10% off, but still, I mean, I spent about 500 bucks for this grinder, and so I thought I'd go ahead and shoot a quick video because there's not a whole lot of videos on YouTube about it, just to show it off and help anybody else decide if, if they want to, to throw down that kind of money on it or not. So I'll do a quick, uh, um, quick walk around on it, and then I'll take it apart, boil it, and then I've got 23 pounds of mule deer meat. Uh, we're going to go ahead and grind it up, and hopefully you get a pretty good idea of how it works. So anyway, so I've got, I've got these two. The size of this thing is huge, okay? The, the pictures that I've seen of it on the internet um, and the videos just do not do this thing justice. So what I've got here, so I've got two soda bottles. NW root beer is the best, of course. So that's a two liter and this is a 16.9 fluid ounces. And of course, you know, the soda bottles will look larger since they're closer to the camera, but there they are next to them. I mean, you can see this, this thing is massive. I want to say it weighs like 80 pounds. Um, this is the one horse model, which is the smallest model that they offer with the reverse on the switch. Um, so it's a one horse motor driving a number 22 grinder head um, it is a carnivore right there you can see now I shot this video before and the last time I did it I went to to take a look at this part right here and the um, I dropped the camera and when I went to catch it it must have uh, turned it off so there's the data plate on the, the motor it's got a nice fan to keep it cool. I'll just do a quick walk around here. That switch right there, um, it's really nice it being um, bright yellow like that, real easy to see. Uh, I believe this is a reset button. This right here is a, a shroud that directs the, the air from the fan forward to keep the motor cool and to cool down the head. It has a uh, storage tray. Get those out of the way now. It's got a storage tray up underneath here that you can use to keep your plates and all that kind of stuff. Uh, handle which you'll uh, you'll definitely want that when you go to uh, 
um, to pick it up off the counter. Nice carry handle there. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and take it apart. Oil it up right quick. Um, I know they do make the uh, silicone sprays for oiling these. I've never, uh, never, and of course it dropped it. Knife. I've never uh, paid for the, uh, the silicone sprays. I just usually use a little bit of cooking oil, so we're using vegetable oil. And just because it's funny, we're using Jerry here for the little minion uh, uh, Scott towels. So I just take a little bit of oil and kind of wipe it down a little bit. Just what you can get to. I mean, this is just kind of to get it started. Um, once the meat starts going through there, uh, you know, the fat from the meat will go ahead and keep everything lubricated. The, the castings, you know, for the, uh, the auger, the grinder head, and the, I don't believe the plate is cast, but they all look real nice and clean. There's not a whole lot of, uh, you know, casting marks or anything like that on there, which is really nice. I mean, it's, it's a pretty well put together machine, or well built machine. This right here is really nice because it's, uh, you know, an awful lot easier, you get more leverage. So we're going to get that. That's tight. We're going to throw our meat tray in there. This thing right here, this little safety device, I don't really care for it very much. But I understand why they put it there. Okay. And we also have the little plunger. Hang on just a sec. Okay, so we got everything plugged in. Um, got a bowl to catch it. Need some meat. What I have here is 23 pounds between this bowl and the other one. I did forget the cool packs. This is a cool, uh, just an ice pack like what you would throw into your, uh, um, your lunch box to keep your lunch cold. And it's got a, a strap here that that needs a little bit longer of a handle on it. There. So that fits nice and snug and it's supposed to keep your, your grinder head cool while you're grinding. There's our bowl. Now, this right here is the part that I was really interested in in getting reviews before I bought this grinder. And that's how loud it is. I had a friend of mine buy a new grinder last year or year before last and he brought it over and we fired that thing up and I had to stop and go get earplugs um, and I'm half deaf so I really wanted to see how loud this one was before I bought it so this is a new camera and a new mic um, I'm just talking at kind of a normal level maybe a little bit louder just because I feel like I ought to for the camera um, so I'll try to keep talking about the same level so that you can tell how loud this thing is you can you can definitely tell that you're running a one horse motor that this is a uh, an industrial machine but it's not to the level that I feel like I need earplugs and it goes through stuff so fast that um, that we won't be here for very long anyway so it's it's really a tolerable noise level so anyway so we're gonna go ahead and throw some meat in there um, one thing I'll probably I'll probably do it you know you're not supposed to stick your fingers in here um, that's why they put the, the guard and they give you the nice little plunger doohickey. But the auger is right here. The top of the, the tray, or the bottom of the tray is right here. There's no way that my fingers are going to reach uh, that auger. Not even if I get half my hand down in there. So if you have small hands, I would really worry about it. Um, I don't really see that big of a deal. Anyway, here we go. We're going to go to forward. And this is, uh, well, hopefully I'll remember to let you know, but this is just
this with the fine plate. So we're just doing straight up one grind, uh, not a coarse grind first, and then a fine plate. I found that that's kind of kind of messy, and the coarse plate will grind an awful lot faster. But then you've got to come back and re-grind everything, and then it doesn't go in nice chunks. This thing is, uh, it's really nice and high, so you can get holes underneath there. I should have added a little bit of water to this. Um, not very much, just a little bit so that uh, the meat, the outside of the meat's slippery. And that usually helps it to... Uh, slide down the chute easier. Usually what I do is I go ahead and, and work up an animal and then uh, as soon as I'm done cutting steaks and roasts and getting everything trimmed, then I go right into grinding. Whereas this, I, uh, I was going to do it last night, but it was Halloween night, we had trick-or-treaters, and uh, so I just, uh, I just quit for the evening. So you can see all the blood and, and everything settled down to the bottom. Now it'll feed an awful lot faster.
Okay, so that was 23 pounds of meat. Uh, the whole video so far is 16 minutes long, and that includes me, you know, jabbering away. Um, what I was saying, if you if you couldn't hear me over the machine, is that usually I I work up the meat, um, you know, cut my steaks and roasts and everything, trim for burger, and then go ahead and grind it that that day. And usually then the um, the meat when you throw it into the bowl, you know, it gets uh, blood or a little bit of water from your your hands when you're uh, you know rinsing your hands off in between cuts and everything and it's uh, it's a lot slipperier so it'll fall down that chute real fast this stuff I cut it up last night and then I stuck it out in the meat cooler um, because last night was Halloween and so I just ended up running out of time so the uh, the surface of the meat had kind of dried out a little bit and so it was wanting to stick inside which was uh, probably the biggest problem but um, this this is the second time I've used it. This time it went a little bit slower than the first time, and I think that's because the meat was a little bit drier. But anyway, this was uh, just a single grind straight to the fine plate, uh, 23 pounds of meat, and like I said, 16 minutes, well, less than that because of all my talking. Um, so you can see that this gel pack, they figure that those are good for 30 to 45 minutes worth of grinding, depending upon ambient temperature. And, you know, it's, it's not warmed up a bit, and it's even frosting up the, the rest of the grinder hit. So, um, you know, this being the second time I've used this machine, um, if you're in the market for a grinder, this is hands down the most amazing grinder that I've ever used. Now, granted, I've only used a couple of them, and this is the, the largest and most expensive one I've ever used. So take that with a grain of salt. But um, you could hear how loud it is. I hope that shows up on the video. Um, it runs real smooth, teardown is, is fast and easy, uh, but be aware that this is a huge machine. Like I said, about 88 pounds, um, I want to say 88, I mean it's, it's taken up most of my counter space. It's probably 18 inches tall and I'd say probably 20 inches from the back to the face of here while you're running it, plus whatever size bowl you're going to have to catch, uh, catch the ground meat. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I hope this gives you uh, a second look or another look at, at one of these grinders if you're thinking about throwing down that, that kind of money to buy one. And um, anyway, hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you next time.